Hi, I'm Ron Clark. So, you finished step one. Congratulations, that's no small feat. That's uh, something to be celebrated, let's say. Uh, you've established, or at least begun to really establish uh, all kinds of new habits. Uh, getting up in the morning, and you know, doing the the uh, ah the affirmations as you wake up, the uh, uh, dry brushing, cold water, rough dry, and a little physical exercise each morning before you start your hermetic exercises. And you do them every morning, and then you do them every evening. Um, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, you've also learned the three basic kinds of meditation. You've had lots of experience with them, and not only that, but in, uh, at least some cases, you've used them. You've applied those types of meditation to a certain task. Okay? That's also pretty good. Um, you've, you've created this whole whole map of your personality, of, of who you are in the world. You know, that's, that's a rare thing to begin with, that anybody bothers to look at themselves that closely, that honestly, and that thoroughly. Uh, that's an amazing asset that you now have at your disposal. And you've created all these uh, physical habits like uh, w when you eat food, uh, when you drink water, when you breathe air, when you move around during the day. And, uh, you know, this is really good. This is quite an accomplishment. So, we'll move on to step two. This is sort of where it really gets interesting, starts to really get interesting, is the work with step two. Now, the primary focus of step two, the most important part, above all else, is the character transformation, where you go to the next step, from cataloging who you are, to making who you are in the world a true reflection of your inner self. You know, a, a more honest, uh, 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 a kinder, you know, however you want to see your personality change and your character change, that is what you are going to begin creating. And we have a lot of very good, useful, uh, dramatic uh, techniques for doing so. Um, the other things I'll get to in just a second, but um, number one, in step two, you have to maintain the same habits that you developed in step one, basically. Exact same routine in the morning and, you know, doing your exercises twice a day and this self-awareness throughout the day, etc. Um, and Barden begins uh, step two with an introduction about auto-suggestion and the subconscious mind. Uh, definitely need to read that to uh, get some understanding of what he is saying there. The, the subconscious, what we call the subconsciousness, which is sort of a, a blanket statement that in, includes uh, certain parts of awareness. Now, as human beings, uh, this is an aspect of our astral body. Um, it is the automatic part of the mind, the, the part of the mind that we don't have direct hands-on control over. Um, it's the part of the mind that is actually moving my hands right now as I speak to you. It's part of my natural expression, and that's part of the subconscious. Um, the subconscious is all those fleeting thoughts in the brain, that's aspect of the subconscious. The subconscious is, to a great extent, 
uh, a part of the brain more than it is a part of the mind, okay? The mind we use in the meditation techniques, we use the mind to disengage from the brain and uh, find a silence eventually, or focus the mind, and the brain joins us when we do that. So we have already learned how to use the brain. We cannot directly control the brain uh, the, for the most part and the subconscious for the most part but we can influence it we can invite it to help us and it will um, yeah we can use it essentially uh, as an ally instead of a foe um, the subconscious is never a foe it's an ally we just have to to make that relationship a reality so <clears throat> What we do with the subconscious mind is we introduce thoughts to it through a process called auto-suggestion, which is the recitation of a short phrase um, that represents an idea of uh, something we want to change in the subconscious. Subconscious is a habitual awareness. All of its processes are established habit, you know, our habitual reactions to things. These are stemming from the unconscious, the subconscious mind. Um, so what we have to do is make new habits, a new habit of thinking, a new habit of responding, a new habit of reacting. If we lay that down in the subconscious, it will take hold. You know, just as we've developed uh, these habits in the morning, these habits of daily, twice daily uh, sessions, etc. We can teach the subconscious new habits. It's very easy and very simple. Um, it just has mostly to do with how you phrase things, what you're expecting. That You can't create miracles with this um, technique, but you can certainly help. So we're going to use this technique. In fact, we're going to use almost all of our techniques in step two to the self-transformation work. Okay? So, let's go over the exercises for step two. The first, you know, on my page over here, uh, are the mental exercises. Now, <clears throat> these are all about your senses and sensory perception. You've, well, and creative imagination. This is the imagination combined with the will. So you are intentionally visualizing an object, for example. Or you are intentionally creating a sound in your imagination. Okay? Um, so... These... Um, we, we take each of the five senses. Uh, Bardon uh, specified a specific order, starting with uh, visualization, you know, sight being the uh, most predominant sense in, in most people. However, over the years, I've learned that some people get stuck right there because they're just not visual. You know, they're, they're not getting the idea, the feel of what it means to succeed in uh, these exercises because it's too foreign. So, if, if you are uh, more of a sound person, you know, uh, if you're a musician, say, uh, and you resonate with sound much more than you do with vision, then start with hearing. You know, if you're a very tactile person, that that becomes you know, your main uh, entry into the world, you know, your main sensory organ, and then start with touch. Whatever is your most predominant sense in that, that regard, start with that sense. It doesn't have to be vision. Uh, part of the reason he, he says vision is, number one, we spend the most of our time, you know, with our awareness focused in our head and our eyes. 
you know, for those of us that are sighted, eyes tell us the most in general uh, in terms of perception. Um, so, that's just the average person, supposedly. So whatever, like I said, whatever sense is the strongest for you, start with that sense. Now, <clears throat> what the idea here is, you're going to create with that sense. But before you start creating with that sense, you have to use that sense. I mean, really use that sense. So for visualization, start looking at things. You know, really look at something. Really examine it. Its details, the colors, the form, what it says to you, you know. Really use your eyes before you try to create something with your mental eyes. This is all a mental exercise, okay? You, you are just imagining that you're seeing something. And when you do that, often enough, with this creative imagination where you are intending, after a while, it's, it's just so realistic. Um, it takes more time or less time to get to that place, but the thing here in these exercises is you want to be able to hold on to that image, to hold on to that sound, or smell, or flavor, or touch, you know? You have to be able to hold on to that, Barden says, for at least five minutes. Whatever. You have to be able to hold on to it, just like you uh, are able to hold on to an idea in the contemplation. It's exactly the same muscle, you know, and they're both mental exercises. So you're using the same muscle that you developed in step one in a different way in step two. So it expands the capacity of that muscle to you know, hold on to something. Keep your mind where you want it, doing what you want it to do. Yeah, so, you go through these sensory exercises, one sense at a time, one after the other. Uh, you do it at first with your eyes closed, in standard meditation state, and then with your eyes open. Okay? <clears throat> that simple. And that will take a while. I've allotted two months for step two. Now, it can take anywhere between two and three at the outside. Uh, mostly because of these exercises, people tend to stumble with uh, inappropriate expectations, things like that. Uh, but it is straightforward and you just do it. It's very simple. Um, so, the astral exercises, this is where it gets really intense. This is, this is when you are going to sit down with your black mirror and your white mirror. You're going to have them side by side. Now, in your black mirror, you're going to choose the one, choose one item that is uh, the most significant to you. Um, you can choose a lesser item if you want, but I recommend going for the, the top of the pile. I really do. I think starting there is the best thing you can do because changing that one item will change any number of lesser items along the way. That's the nature of character transformation. One little change can have great ramifications. You know, it can impact all these other aspects of character in a positive way. So, choose whatever item you're going to start with, and you're going to stick with this until the end. You're going to transform this character trait. That's all there is to it. Um, and you're going to throw everything at its transformation. One of the things you're going to throw at its transformation is your white mirror. See, this is the value of the white mirror. It's your ally. These are 
all your allies. And some of them have got to relate to that item you have chosen. So what you have to do with this item is you've got to do some planning, some strategizing. You've got to choose an alternate behavior to the negative behavior of this item. You have to analyze the item deeply enough so you begin to see what is at the root of this negative behavior. Use this contemplation for that, you know, really analyze this negative trait. If you dis discover what is at the root of it, and it's almost invariably a positive need that, you know, a as uh, small children, really, uh, we responded in this very infantile way, or a very adolescent way, you know, um, not an adult way, not in a way that we would choose as the adult we are now. So, there's still at its root, an honest, good, positive need that got twisted in how we tried to meet that need by, you know, this negative trait. Um, so what we need to do is honor that positive need and give it a positive expression. We're positized, positivizing this negative trait. That's character transformation, making a positive out of the negative. And what will happen, so we emphasize this positive through auto-suggestion with a phrase that expresses where we want to be with this character trait, okay? And we do that enough, slowly they come together and it, the new replaces the old habit. That is character transformation, the replacement of one habit with another that is positive and truly meets our needs as an adult, okay? So, you go through this analysis and you pick your trait and you look at your um, white mirror for any allies, any um, positive things that are already in existence and they might influence the, you know, positive alternative you come up with, at any rate, they will help you in this transformation of the negative trait. Now comes the, the, the work of character transformation. And there are basically five different um, categories of things that you will do. First is the auto-suggestion. And use your auto-suggestion, you know, as you're waking up, as you're going to sleep, throughout your day when it strikes you as a good time to do it. Um, in your meditation practice, you know, start or end with your uh, auto-suggestion. Just fit it in there somewhere, as often as you can, under any circumstance. Uh, Second, uh, and the third, the uh, first is turning um, your negative trait when it arises into your positive alternative, okay? That's the actual act of, you know, hands-on pushing and molding, and um, but that always happens in the moment that it arises, and this is the third aspect of the trans transformation is being attentive. You have to be aware of yourself. So you have to be, um, you know, which started in step one, this self-awareness, how we are in the world at any given moment, you have to recognize when the negative trait arises. Now, if this is the top of your list of negative traits, it's going to come up fairly frequently. So you've really got to be on top of things, because it'll come up subconsciously. You won't be aware of it coming up at first, okay? But, you know, you'll train yourself the habit of noticing when this negative trait comes up. And when it does, you have to, number one, 
recognize that it's happening. You have to st stop everything and say, whoa, here's my negative trait. Then you have to let go of the negative trait. And then you have to look at your positive alternative and focus your mind on your positive alternative. And then, you know, be <laughs> your positive alternative. Literally, you know, find some way that you can enact this positive inter alternative. Um, so, that's a process. Recognize that it's happening. Detach from it. Refocus on the positive alternative. And then do something to uh, materialize that positive alternative in that moment. That's the only time, the only instant that character can really be transformed is in the moment when the negative trait arises. That's the magic moment. That's where you have all the power and you are disengaging from the subconscious uh, you know, input just like in the observation exercise, mental exercise, step one, you're disengaging, it quiets, and you're refocusing and sticking your mind, okay? So it's a very sort of mechanical operation. Um, it can be very exhilarating, you know, to suddenly realize that, you know, after a while of doing this, oh, fuck, things are changing, you know? that didn't arise that time when it usually would or it arose and I caught it immediately and was immediately able to you know that feels really good when you start to succeed at the character transformation so you got two months of intensive character transformation going on you'll also have step three so it's not the end and step into step two you just have to make progress. That's the main thing. And step two, you need to learn these techniques and get accustomed to applying them in a way that actually creates change within you, you know, to really be that committed and that uh, strict with it. Um, yeah, as long as you are making progress, and this is, like I said before, earlier, this is a, a lifelong process. This is ever going, you know, you're always going to be making changes to your personality because your personality is always going to be changing and growing and blah, blah, blah. They'll become easier and easier and easier. It will be no effort at all in time. But in the beginning, it takes effort, you know, it takes that magical will. <clears throat> okay. So, ah, uh, uh, one thing I didn't say, it was a, a, <laughs> just carried on with the uh, techniques you're going to be applying to your character transformation. You're going to be applying the magic of breathing. With the affirmation, you're going to breathe the affirmation in and out. The magic of water, okay? And the magic of food. You're going to devote all three of those to your character transformation. You do one item at a time. You don't branch out into other items while you're doing it. And also during your periods of contemplation, you know, as often as seems appropriate, devote that to... Uh, your character transformation, or as needed, you know, uh, that's a very valuable tool, especially if, uh, like last time I, I mentioned, going from the, uh, um, the uh, single-pointedness meditation to a vacancy with your idea, whatever you're meditating on, and then coming out of the vacancy back into a single-pointedness on that same idea will reveal a lot more to you. Okay, now, physical exercises, these are fun.
Okay. The... Okay, we'll talk about it in the order that Barden pre presented it, um, which is kind of backwards a little bit. Uh, first thing is the poor breathing of vital energy. Um, he, last time, we did do that in step one, didn't we? No, oh, we didn't do poor breathing, that's right. It was just the mystery of breathing. So, poor breathing. And it's the vital energy that are, you are in inhaling through all the pores in your skin. Your whole body simultaneously is inhaling. When you inhale, feel your body inhale and pull in the vital energy, which, you know, we talked about in the mystery of breathing, and then exhale it. So this is what we start out with, just the inhale and exhale of the vital energy. There's no accumulating anything here. It's just opening the pores, you know, getting used to breathing with your whole body. You're not going to be sucking in air through the soles of your feet or something like that. But you'll have the sensation. You may have to use your creative imagination here in the beginning where you're imagining that you're drawing, and with your inhale, your natural inhale, you're drawing in vital energy through your breath and through all the pores of your skin. And then when you exhale, you're just letting it go. You're exhaling it through your whole body. It's very easy when you get used to doing it. It might be a little difficult to conceive of at first. I don't know. It was very simple for me. It's like, Oh yeah, I do that all the time, don't I? <laughs> um, so yeah, you're breathing in and out with your whole body, but what you're breathing in and out is the vital energy. Now this will take some, probably will take a little creative imagination at the beginning to what does vital energy feel like. Uh, I can't describe it, uh, we're perfectly accurately to you because we each experience it just slightly differently. Um, it's energizing. Um, when you have accumulated the vital energy, you feel oh so powerful. You feel powerful. You know like yeah, like anybody in front of that felt it. Um, so it builds to a, a very dynamic state. But if you're breathing it in and out, it doesn't have that degree of dynamism. But it, it feels exciting, um, stimulating. Not overly so, um, comfortably so. Um, yeah, it's like on a hot day when you are sprayed with a cold mist of water. You know, it's that kind of, ah, oh, refreshing. But at the same time, it's like on a cold day when you step in front of the fire. It's that kind of warming, you know, it fills you in that way. And it's sort of electric at the same time. It has a little buzz of static electricity to it. Um, visually for me, it's sort of a, a golden, uh, yeah, it has sort of a golden tint. You know, it's not exactly a solid, but it's just sort of, sort of a golden colored light, like a glint a little with gold. Um, so you're breathing and exhaling this, and that is the exercise. And you've got two months. To learn how to do this. You're, after a while, what you're going to do is you're going to add your auto-suggestion to the vital energy as you are inhaling it. But you really want to wait to do that until you actually feel the vital energy. That's the thing. If you apply your 
creative imagination, the imagination of this sensation, along with your will that you are going to connect with the vital energy, you'll connect with the vital energy and you'll start breathing the actual vital energy. So by the end of step two, that's where you want to be, where you are breathing the actual vital energy in and out. You're not accumulating here. You're exhaling exactly what you've inhaled, okay? And you're using your auto-suggestion. Now, with auto-suggestion, after a while, you can develop, if you're doing this with the breathing, and, you know, combining it with the vital energy, you can breathe in your auto-suggestion, and you can exhale your negative character trait, or the opposite of your auto-suggestion. And this sort of doubles down on what you're doing. So, those are the basic physical exercises. The next thing is it's more general. Um, it, Barden calls it asana. Although this isn't really a, a yogic asana by any means. What he means by asana is a position in which you will be comfortable to sit for long stretches of time during your hermetic exercises. Okay? Now, if you already have that position, you know, grand, go with that. Um, what Barden suggests is traditionally called the king posture, where you're sitting upright and, uh, you know, the head is up and the arms are in this square position uh, with the hands on the thighs and the uh, knees together. Um, this is very traditional in uh, Western Hermetics in Europe especially. Um, but any position that works for you. Um, the idea here is you need to get comfortable. You need to be able to just ignore your body. You need to learn how to not respond to that itch on your cheek after you've been sitting for five minutes. You know, because that, that interrupts your concentration. It interrupts your attention to, to scratch that itch. So, <clears throat> all, the, the mind can conquer all of these things. We just don't give it attention. Again, it's that step one mental exercise. You know, choosing where your attention is going to be placed. And, you know, that, that, that ability has to become so powerful as a hermetic magician. You need to be able to peel the paint off the walls with your ability to focus, you know? It has to be so tight. Um, oh, where was I? Ah, oh, so the asana. So it's about finding that position and getting used to being in that position without interruption for at least a half hour, at least a half hour, you know, at least a half hour. You really got to get to the point where the amount of time is unimportant. Uh, you want to be in a position where you're not cutting the circulation off in your legs. You know, if a lotus position doesn't work for you, and you just cut the blood circulation in your lower, toast, lower, lower torso, then that's not good. It has to be comfortable and sustainable, okay? And as an extension of that exercise, and you have to just practice this all the time, um, is being more aware and in control of your body. This is a little further deepening of what we were doing in step one with being aware of yourself, you know, how you are, who you are. Here, it's also about being more aware and in control of your body. For example, Barton gives the examples of you feel thirsty, you, uh, it's sort of asceticism, 
where if you feel thirsty, you don't drink water in, for a while. If you're hungry, you don't eat for a while, um, etc. So it is an asceticism, but it's, it's about being in control and not driven by uh, subconscious uh, influences. Again, it's character transformation, you know. We're getting here in the subconscious and we're going to mess around with things. That's the beginning of a magical uh, initiation, is taking control uh, of who you are, what you are. And it's all the different layers. Okay, so that is the overview of the exercises. Okay, so... Here's the weekly, daily exercise list. And I have broken this down into eight weeks, two months. That should be sufficient, but, you know, everybody's different. If it isn't quite, then take a little more time to finish, because you really need to achieve the exercises in step two. You need to have made some progress in the character transformation. Okay? So, now there's more things in step two that you need to keep track of throughout your day. The mystery of food and the mystery of water. These are both to be devoted to the character transformation every day, all day, all the time. You need to be attentive in your daily life. You need to, um, you know, attentive of your personality as it manifests itself. This is going to be the main thing in step two. Being aware enough of yourself that you see when the negative trait arises, okay? So at that end, having some bodily control during the day. It's discipline, shall we say. And you need to always, like I said, be aware of character traits arising, how they arise, when they arise, why they arise, now, what do you do with them when they arise? You know, keep track of all that stuff, all that information is good information. And you've always got to be, you know, doing your auto-suggestion. Every chance, time you get a chance to do it, you know, stick it in there. Uh, every morning, again, we have the um, mystery of breathing and your auto-suggestion as you are awakening uh, then you're brushing the cold water, bathing in the rough dry, and a little physical exercise. And then every night, as you're falling asleep, you're going to do your auto-suggestion with the mystery of breathing. Okay. So, <clears throat> week one. Now, we start out, and like we did in uh, step one, with the thought control, the observation of the brain... And this natural slowing that occurs in the brain. A, a little check-in on who we are, where we're at in that moment. And it really focuses us on the inside, where we need to be. Um, so at this point, you just need a few, a few moments of the, that observer state for everything to quiet down. And... During that, or at this point, is when we need to bring in the idea of sauna. Make sure you're in that comfortable position and, you know, recognize that, okay, I'm going to be, you know, dealing with the body quirks in a different way this time. Then we go into a, a little term of contemplation, which should be devoted to the character transformation. Um, as much as possible. But there will be times when you need to contemplate something else, and this is the only time you have for contemplation, you know, then stick it in. But if you can, devote it to the character transformation. Then we go into a period of vacancy of mind. Again, you know, like the period of contemplation, however long you need. The vacancy of mind, however long or ever brief, uh, is appropriate for you in that moment. These are totally up to you. There is no minimum. Once you've achieved the minimum, you don't need to repeat the minimum 
every time. Then we start with, uh, I'm going to, for the examples uh, in this, uh, this list, I'm going to use Barden's uh, sequence, visual first. So fire, water, air, or etc. Um, so we're starting the first exercise of the object visualization. Okay, this is using the creative imagination, the imagination with the will to create an image with your eyes closed at first, an image in the um, darkness in front of you. Um, for example, you're creating the image of a red ball, a small red ball. Excuse me. So, you see before you a small red ball. It's that simple. Um, then you start, once you've done okay with a small red ball, and you can hold it for several minutes, I mean, sticking your mind to it again, to your mind is where you want it to be, doing what you want it to do in that moment, and that's create a small red ball. And it just hangs there in the curtain of blackness in front of you. Okay, then go on to another option. Okay, now I've got a pencil, and it's just hanging there in the air, and it's a pencil. You know, I can zoom in, I can look at details on it if I want, or not. Doesn't matter. It's just a pencil hanging in front of me. And I go on to other objects. And I change up those objects. Uh, <clears throat> with your eyes closed. So you want to be able to hold any object, a visualization of any object you want for as long as you want. And the more realistic it is, the better. You know, just keep working at it until it becomes very realistic. Um, yeah, that's as easy as it gets. Uh, then, you go to working, a session of working on your mirrors. Like I said, you take the black mirror and the white mirror, and you figure out which item you're going to take. This is the, the very first week. The very first day of the first week, you really need to decide then what this item is going to be. Um, and you look in your white mirror and see your allies. And you begin work on this affirmation of the positive alternative. It might take you a couple days to figure that out. Who knows? It may come very quickly. Um, but, you know, make sure it's a good one. Make sure it's a good one, because you're going to stick with it. And then you move on to the transformation. But during this period, it is going to be mostly uh, contemplation. Contemplation of your mirror, of the item. You know, you need to be able to, you need to really understand this character trait as deeply as as you possibly can. You know, peel away the layers. Just look back in the past and see where it comes from. What, what created this negative trait. So this, this is where you begin that process, okay? And then you go to poor breathing, the vital energy. Inhale it and exhale it. And begin with the creative imagination of the sensations, you know, the innervating sensation, the stimulating sensation of the vital energy in and out with all of your pores. Feel all of your body, okay, inhaling and exhaling. So, you do that all, every morning and every evening for the first week. Then, for the second week, we're going to, the only differences are going to be in the visualization exercise, 
you're going to start doing your visualizations with your eyes open. So instead of that red ball hanging on the curtain of blackness, that red ball hangs in front of you, blocks out what's behind it. It just hangs right in front of you. That pencil floats in the air in front of you, wherever you move your eyes, there is a pencil. And again, it's with your imagination. You don't actually, there's no physical red ball forming in front of you in the air. This is all in your imagination. And that imagination, after a few years, years, becomes magical in a way um, that would surprise you. Let's put it that way. Um, but for now, you're using your creative imagination. You know, sort of tricking your mind into seeing uh, a red ball. You know, it's, it's your brain who is looking through your eyes. The mind is looking through the brain, through your eyes, but it's the brain really where that red ball is gaining substance and being created. Okay, so again, we're making the brain do something for us and the brain assists, eventually it assists in what you're doing and that's when it becomes just second nature. Oh, there's a ball, there's a pencil, there's a, you know, okay. So the second week, the difference is we're doing that with our eyes open and breathing, the poor breathing, the vital energy, we now hook up our auto-suggestion and devote the poor breathing to our character transformation. We breathe in that positive alternative that will to achieve this transformation. The, the transformation itself. We pull in the power of transformation. Um, so, that's the differences in week two. And week three, we then change up the sensory imagination to another sense. In this case, hearing. The auditory imagination. The water. Okay? This water is all about vibration. This isn't air. Hearing isn't air. Hearing is water. <clears throat> okay? Hearing is water. So we do the auditory imagination, which is just like the visual imagination. Um, with our eyes closed at first, we imagine different sounds that we have heard in the past. We bring sounds up from memory. You know, if, if you're really hard up for a sound and you have a little bell, ring a little bell and then imagine it. You know, until you can bring up that sound in your mind, you know, do it again. So you have it in your mind and then bring it up in your mind with your imagination. And, but of course, first, you need to start hearing things. Listen to things. Listen closely to different things, different music, uh, just anything that makes a noise. Listen to it, if you can. Um, so, we're imagining different sounds. One sound, then another sound, and, you know, any sound you can think of. You want to be able to create any sound that you can think of um, when you want to create that sound. For, keep it for as long as you want to create that sound. Um, just like with the visualization exercises. So, this week it's with your eyes closed. The rest of it's the same. And week four, the only difference is... Um, with the um, auditory imagination, you're having your eyes open. With the uh, auditory, well, with the other senses, it's the eyes open, eyes closed shouldn't really make that much of a difference. Um, it would be, be very much the same. Um, 
when you are imagining a sound, you want to imagine just the sound. You will have just the sound of the bell ringing, not the image of the bell ringing accompanying the sound. That then is a multi-sensorial visualization. That comes later in step three, okay? So for now, you want to isolate this sense. That's part of these exercises, is you're isolating each sense. Um, yeah. So, the eyes open, and then week five, the only change here is the, um, you're going from uh, sound to touch, you know, tactile imagination, hot, cold, soft, hard, you know, jagged, all these kinds of things. Uh, again, it's done with your imagination. It doesn't actually take place in the tips of your fingers. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's very simple. <laughs> Just imagine you are feeling these things. You start with your eyes closed and then you go to eyes open and we're only going to take one week with a tactile imagination okay week six now we come to smith again the only difference here is in the imagination exercises the rest of everything is the same still working on the poor breathing vital energy and your auto suggestion and spending a goodly amount of time on your uh, character transformation, working with your mirror, meditating, and etc. So now we move on to smell, olfactory imagination, where you just imagine different things that you smell. And in this period, I mean, go out and smell things. Really smell that rose. You know, really get to know the subtleties of fragrance and the harshness of fragrance. You know. It's all kinds of different things. So this time we're going back to eyes closed and then eyes open. So you start with your eyes closed for a week, uh, smelling things. And then week seven, you have your eyes open instead of your eyes closed with the smelling of things. So week eight, I'll go through the whole list here again with week eight. Uh, because, just a little reminder, so in the morning and in the evening, you're going to do a, a, a brief uh, session of thought control, the observation of uh, the brain and quieting, and then a, a session of contemplation uh, on whatever topic you might want, uh, preferably on character transformation. Uh, and then a session of vacancy of mind, and then you're going to the taste imagination where you have to imagine different flavors. And like, like before, start tasting things, you know, really use your taste buds. And then imagine that you're tasting that taste. You know, <clears throat> the, the senses, it's interesting, the senses come down to basically chemical reactions, like with taste. These are molecules of different chemicals, you know, being sensed by your tongue that our brain is then interpreting as a flavor. Same with the smell, you know, those are molecules of substances activating the, the nerve endings in our sinuses, which our brain then translates into smell and sight. These are just, you know, photons striking our retina or whatever and you know the brain going into the brain in such a way that it translates them into sight <clears throat> so what we are doing <clears throat> well every time that chemical response happens there is an emotional imprint that is retained in the subconscious awareness so in effect what we're doing is we're mimicking that emotional content by imagining these things. So, ultimately, there's really very little difference between the experience of the imagined 
sensory uh, input and the factual sensory input. You see what I'm saying? Oh. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, so we do the taste imagination. This is for one week with the eyes open and then, I mean with the eyes closed and then the eyes open. Again, it's n no big deal. And we meditate and work with our character transformation, the black mirror and the white mirror. This is this ongoing process, especially for now. This step and the next step, there's going to be this real focus, or there is this real focus on the character transformation, because this, this needs to be done to uh, a, an acceptable degree before we can really get to things like uh, accumulating elements. Um, so you'll be introduced to the elements, but you're not going to be accumulating them until the character has a certain degree of elemental equilibrium. Okay? So. And then at the end of each session in this last week, we're going to be doing the poor breathing of the vital energy mixed with our character transformation auto-suggestion. So in and out, in and out. <clears throat> okay, and this can be, you know, as long as you want. There's no real limit. I would say 10, 15 minutes is sufficient. And a half hour is a good long time. Okay? So you don't have to obsess over it. It doesn't need to be excessive. Okay. So, in summary, step two, man. There's a lot that happens in step two. A lot happens in step two. That's why I say it's where it really gets exciting. You know, this is the point at which we really get to see some change happening with these, you know, <clears throat> habits that we started developing in step one. We see them become really solid and firm and reliable habits in step two. You know, another two months of all these exercises, all the observation, all the uh, contemplation. You know, our powers of contemplation have just grown incredibly in this time. We've got more contemplation under our belt in this time than most people do in like three or four lifetimes. And, you know, our time spent in the silence Hopefully that has gone deeper and deeper and different parts of it have begun revealing itself to you. Uh, the, that silence is, like I said, it's a very active state of perception. It's just pure perception, which is a very magical thing. And then, you know, in step two here, we've, you know, taken our senses, which were pretty dull, uh, at the end of step one and sharpened them and sharpened our minds. We've sharpened our mental discipline to where we can put our mind where we want it for however long we want to put it there. That's the goal, you know, and we become creative with our senses. That's important because a magician is creative, but a magician is creative with their whole being, and that means all the senses, okay? Um, <clears throat> we've learned about auto-suggestion, and we have slowly turned our subconscious mind into an ally, and we're beginning to form our own character, you know? We're seeing ourselves become better people, you know? How cool is that? <laughs> really, you know, and you suddenly realize that, wow, I changed, you know? I changed this part of myself that was obnoxious, you know? That's, oh, that's, it's a very rewarding feeling, and it just propels you forward. You know, at that point, well, for me, I didn't want to stop, you know? 
I wanted to just keep on going. And we now have the tools to do that. And like I said, we've made our subconscious mind our friend. We've got a friend for life, an ally in all the future magical work we are going to do. And your subconscious will be one of your greatest, most powerful allies. You know, it's like we're born with our own ally. That's pretty cool. And, you know, we've, we've learned about the vital energy. Now, this is very important, especially for the young magician, to be able to work with and control the vital energy. In the next step, we'll learn how to accumulate the vital energy and work with it, you know, project it. Um, but in order to be able to do that, we have to have accustomed our body to the presence, to sensing, and being able to pull it in and push it out so we're manipulating the vital energy. We're using our breath, but still, we're pulling it in with our whole body and expelling it with our whole body. So we're using the vital energy here. Which is really pretty cool when you think about it. You know, at the beginning of the month, beginning of the two months ago, you couldn't have done that. Move the vital energy from the universe into my body and then back out again. And, you know, use it to help me transform myself. You know, the vital energy, there's just a million things you can do with it when you start working with it. But that's the next step. So, the next video will be on step three in some point in the fairly near future. Blessed be. Bye-bye.